Welcome to Bible Study with Fred. I'm reading today from Exodus chapter 37, verses 10 to 24. Uh, please follow along with me in your Bible if you would. And I'll start in verse 10 of chapter 37 of Exodus. And he made the table of shittim wood, two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. He overlaid it with pure gold and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also, he made thereunto a border of an handbreadth round about, made a crown of gold for the border there around about. And he cast for it four rings of gold and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings and the places in the staves to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes and his spoons and his bowls and his covers to cover with all of pure gold. He made the candlestick of pure gold of beaten work made he. The candlestick, his shaft, his branch, his bowls, his knots, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds of one branch, and not in a flower, and three bowls made like almonds of another branch, and not in a flower. So throughout the six branches going out had the candlestick. In the candlestick were four bowls, made like unto almonds, his knops, and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same, and all of it was one beaten work of pure gold. He made his seven lamps, and his snuffers, and his snuff dishes of pure gold, of the talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. Now, I'm going to repeat some comments I made on chapter 25. Much is made of the word candlestick by skeptics. Modern Bible translators choose to translate the word as lampstand. This is a definition Strong gave it. In the era of the translation of the King James Bible, the authorized version on which we rely, a candlestick was simply, quote, an instrument to bear a candle, as in Thomas Wilson's 1612, a Christian dictionary. Reliable sources state that the word lampstand came in use in English around the mid-1800s, so it would, have been un it would not have been available to the translators of this Bible. Candlestick is entirely appropriate if you regard the cross references and review the Hebrew word, which is in use today, the menorah. Knop is another word over which people stumble. A knop is a decorative knob at the top of something. It could be the ornamental top or capital of a pillar designed to distribute the weight placed directly on the pillar. Think of the opening at the top of a typical candle holder where the candle fits in or part of the oil-burning menorah just under that cup. If I'm not mistaken, this would be the meaning of the knop. There are six branches from the centerpiece and seven lamps. Candlesticks play an important <clears throat> part in prophecy, as this candlestick will represent actual historical churches and types of churches in Christianity. Zechariah 4.1, beginning in that. And the angel that talked with me again came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. Two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel to talk with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel last talked with me, answered, and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, not but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, for Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For with despise the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. And those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Verse 11 goes on. Then answered I and said unto them, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Then you jump forward to Revelation 1, 9 to 20. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. 
But turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the patch with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now snuffers and snuff dishes should be mentioned here also. Snuffers were a metal cone on the end of a handle for putting out the flame at the top of the candle. A snuff dish was a dish for the snuffer. Well, pick it up in verse, uh, starting in verse 25 next time, uh, and go to the end of the chapter. And I uh, hope you'll read your Bible, study your Bible, cross-reference the verses, pray to God for wisdom and understanding, and then share your interpretation with someone else. Thank you.